In today's video lesson, we're going to introduce the concept of fiscal policy as a way for a government to influence the overall level of economic activity in a nation to help that economy achieve its macroeconomic objectives. Let's begin by reviewing what exactly those macroeconomic objectives are that we talk so much about. The three macroeconomic objectives that any government or central bank policy are hoping to promote the achievement of are full employment, stable prices, and economic growth. Each of these three objectives can be shown using the basic aggregate demand and aggregate supply model. As we can see here in the graph on the right, an economy experiencing the current level of equilibrium output where aggregate demand intersects short run aggregate supply at the full employment level of real GDP is certainly achieving the first macroeconomic objective of full employment. We also assume that at the full employment level of output, the level of inflation in the economy indicated by the equilibrium price level is stable. Therefore, an economy achieving its macroeconomic objective of full employment is also most likely achieving its objective of stable prices. Of course, the third economic objective requires that one or more of the curves in this graph shift. An increase in either aggregate demand, as we see here, to AD1, or an increase in aggregate supply, as we see here, to SRAS1, indicates that an economy is achieving the third macroeconomic objective of economic growth. Of course, that is visible because an equilibrium level of output would be achieved that is beyond the original full employment equilibrium level of output. So there's a little review on how we can show the three macroeconomic objectives in an ADIS diagram. The next thing we're going to talk about is the use of fiscal policy by government to help achieve these macroeconomic objectives. Let's begin with the clear definition of fiscal policy. Fiscal policy can be defined as any policy by government that changes either the level of taxation in the economy or the level of government spending within the economy in order to promote the achievement of one or more of the macroeconomic objectives that we see here. Essentially, fiscal policy involves either increasing taxes or decreasing taxes or increasing the amount of government spending or decreasing the amount of government spending. So on one hand, fiscal policy involves the use of taxes on households and firms. On the other hand, fiscal policy involves the use of government spending. Now there are two basic types of fiscal policy we can distinguish between. A fiscal policy meant to increase the level of aggregate demand or aggregate supply in the economy is known as an expansionary fiscal policy. We'll identify which types of changes in taxes and government spending will have an expansionary effect in just a moment. On the other hand, a fiscal policy that reduces or is meant to reduce the level of aggregate demand or aggregate supply in the economy is known as a contractionary fiscal policy. So the next question is, how would a government want to change the level of taxation or government spending in the economy in order to expand the level of economic activity? And how would a government wish to change taxes and government spending in order to contract the level of economic activity? An expansion requires an increase in aggregate demand. Therefore, a decrease in the level of taxation in an economy is considered expansionary. We'll explain why in more detail in just a moment. Additionally, since government spending is a component of aggregate demand, anything that increases government spending, or any policy involving an increase in government spending, will have an expansionary effect on the economy, since it will lead to an increase in the overall level of economic activity. Contraction refers to a decrease in economic activity. Therefore, an increase in taxes on households and businesses would have a contractionary effect. Again, we'll explore why this is in more detail in just a moment. On the other hand, a decrease in government spending, which is a component of aggregate demand, will have a contractionary effect. Therefore, an increase in taxes or a decrease in government spending is considered a contractionary fiscal policy. Let's look at a couple of situations in which a government may wish to use fiscal policy in order to help promote the achievement of macroeconomic objectives. An economy experiencing an equilibrium level of output like that on the graph on the right here clearly does not need any sort of fiscal policy action. This country is currently already achieving its macroeconomic objectives of full employment and price level stability. But what would happen if a fall in one of the determinants of aggregate demand, such as consumption or investment, 
leads to a decrease in the level of aggregate demand of this economy. Let's show how that would look on the graph first of all. A, a fall in private consumption or private investment would shift the AD curve to the left such as this to AD1. The impact that this has on the equilibrium level output is clearly negative. This economy would experience what is called a demand deficient recession visible as the difference between Y1, the new equilibrium level, and YFE, the full employment level. In addition to recession, this economy would experience some price level instability in the form of deflation as average prices in the economy would fall from PE to PE1. A decrease in aggregate demand caused by fallen consumption and investment has several negative effects on this nation's economy, including a decrease in the price level or deflation and a decrease in national output or recession and a rise in unemployment. All three of these are negative for the nation's economy and a government may choose to intervene to try to stimulate the amount of economic activity and return the economy to full employment. So the goal of a, of a fiscal policy in this case would clearly be to shift aggregate, aggregate demand back out to the point where it intersects AS at the full employment level. What policies could the government use to stimulate aggregate demand and move the economy back to full employment? Clearly what is needed is an expansionary fiscal policy. As we explained earlier, expansionary fiscal policies include decreases in taxes or increases in government spending. But how would each of these affect aggregate demand and help get the economy back to full employment? First of all, let's talk about what kind of taxes are decreased here. Taxes might include income taxes on households. What effect would a decrease in household income taxes have on aggregate demand? We're going to do a little transition mechanism here which will show how a fall in income taxes will or possibly could increase the level of aggregate demand of the economy. So let's assume the government lowers income taxes on households. This of course means that households have more disposable income which refers to the income of households after taxes have been paid. An increase in disposable income leads to an increase in household consumption. Of course, the abbreviation for consumption is C, and as we've learned in previous video lessons, C, or consumption, is a component of aggregate demand. So an increase in household consumption should increase the level of aggregate demand in the economy and help move the economy back to full employment, as we see on the right. So a decrease in taxes on households increases disposable income, which should increase consumption and stimulate aggregate demand or expand output back to the full employment level. Now that's one option, so we'll call that policy option one. The second fiscal policy option, of course, is a direct injection of government spending. So government could increase the amount of, of taxpayer money that it spends on um, things such as infrastructure or uh, public works or defense or, or education or health care. All of these types of spending can be summarized with the abbreviation G for government spending. As we learned in previous video lessons, G is a component of aggregate demand. Therefore, an increase in G should shift the AD curve back out or increase aggregate demand, which will have the effect of reversing the deflation in the economy. In other words, price levels should rise and we should have once again a stable price level. Should also increase the level of output in the economy from Y1 back to YFE and employment should increase. Therefore, unemployment should fall. These are all three positive things for the nation's economy and they all represent an expansion of economic output. Of course the decrease in tax is intended to have the same consequences. Lowering income taxes on households should lead to some demand pull inflation returning price levels to the full employment level and output to the full employment level and unemployment should return to a lower rate corresponding with the natural rate of unemployment. So what we've seen here is the use of expansionary fiscal policy in the form of decreasing taxes or increasing government spending used to return an economy back towards its full employment level following a decrease in aggregate demand due to a decrease in private consumption and investment. So what we've just shown is the use of expansionary fiscal policy. Clearly expansionary fiscal policy can be used during a recession to help an economy return to full employment. So next we're going to talk about the use of contractionary fiscal policy and try to understand when a government may wish to 
increase taxes or decrease government spending. Let's assume something in the economy happens that causes aggregate demand to increase and therefore causes severe demand pull inflation. Something that may cause this could be a depreciation of the nation's currency or a fall in the exchange rate in other words. So if the nation's exchange rate gets weaker against other currencies, this will lead to an increase in exports from that country since other countries will find that country's goods cheaper. As exports rise and imports fall, in fact a weaker currency will also lead to a fall in imports, we will see an increase in the nation's net exports or XN. An increase in net exports causes aggregate demand to increase and shift to the right which has several negative effects for the nation's economy including demand pull inflation causing the price level to rise and a decrease in unemployment. Now that may sound like a good thing but when an economy is already producing at YFE it has what we would consider a healthy and desirable rate of unemployment in the economy. Anything lower than that, anything lower than the natural rate of unemployment tends to be highly inflationary and additionally in the short run at least the level of national output will increase beyond the full employment level. On our graph, a sudden increase in net exports would cause aggregate demand to shift outwards, as we see here, to AD1. It would cause a relatively small increase in the level of output and employment in the economy to Y1, but a relatively large increase in the price level. Because resources are incredibly scarce now, due to the very high level of output, there tends to be a lot of inflation. So we see demand pull inflation resulting from this currency depreciation. The exchange rate fell in the economy causing net exports to rise and causing demand pull inflation. Of course a high inflation rate erodes people's real incomes and reduces the standards of living of the people in the nation over time. Since wages are not rising but prices are households will become poorer in real terms. For this reason the government may find it desirable to reduce the level of aggregate demand of the economy. To do so, the government can use contractionary fiscal policies. As we learned earlier, a contractionary fiscal policy consists of an increase in taxes and a decrease in government spending. Let's talk about how each of these can help correct the demand pull inflation that this economy is experiencing and return output to the full employment level and more importantly, return inflation to a stable rate. An increase in the taxes on households will lead to a decrease in disposable income since households will have less money left over after they've paid their taxes to the government. As disposable income falls, households will start to consume at a lower level. And consumption, as we know, is a component of aggregate demand. So a fall in consumption should cause aggregate demand to decrease and shift back to the left and help return the economy back to its full employment level. So a fall in AD will bring that demand pull inflation down. So we'll see a fall in the price level, which in this case would be desirable. It will bring the level of output back to the full employment level, which again is desirable. And unemployment will rise, which would normally be considered a bad thing. But since this economy was experiencing unnaturally low levels of unemployment, an increase in unemployment would actually be beneficial for the economy. So one type of contractionary fiscal policy is an increase in taxes. The other type of contractionary policy, of course, is a decrease in government spending. Government can cut back on its expenditures on public works projects, on education, on health care, on defense, on national parks, on anything else government spends money on. As the government reduces its own expenditures in the economy, aggregate demand will fall and these desirable outcomes will result. Price levels will fall back to a stable rate national output will fall and unemployment will rise back to the natural rate of unemployment. Of course these are all considered desirable in the case of demand pull inflation. An economy producing at AD1 as we see on this graph has very high inflation and therefore we need to contract the level of output in the economy to help bring down these inflation rates. We have what's called an inflationary gap in this economy. Contractionary fiscal policies can help reduce that inflationary gap and get the economy back to full employment. So this video lesson was just an introduction to the use of fiscal policy, which consists of changing the level of taxation and government spending in order to achieve the three macroeconomic objectives of price level, stability, economic growth, and full employment. 
When an economy is in a demand deficient recession, expansionary fiscal policies consisting of lower taxes and increased government spending can help get the economy back to its full employment level. If an economy is experiencing demand pull inflation caused by a sudden unexpected increase in aggregate demand, contractionary policies consisting of higher taxes and lower government spending can be used to return or hopefully reduce the level of aggregate demand and get the economy back to a level of output at which prices are stable and unemployment is at its natural rate. In our next video lesson, we're going to discuss two possible outcomes of expansionary and contractionary fiscal policy, evaluating the effect that they may have on an economy, considering other variables beyond just the simple impact that it has on aggregate demand.